Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are doing a re-review of the Marvel Legends Hulkbuster. I've had a few people ask me to re-review this guy. It's been almost two years since I reviewed it, and with the new movie coming out, or having just come out, uh, people want me to see what, if I still like it, or if it's a good idea, or if they should wait for the Build-A-Figure that's supposed to be coming soon, or what. So I figure, okay, let's take a look at it. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites, just based on nostalgia. Uh, but that means it also has to be at least a decent figure because I couldn't have nostalgia over a crappy figure. So let's let's take a look at it and we'll go as objectively as possible. So he's just about 8 inches tall which puts him at about 20 centimeters. So he is comparably sized to a lot of the Hulk figures if not slightly taller. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you can see this guy in action up against the Hulk or just posed a little bit. Uh, but he is a fun figure to pose, even though he's so big and bulky. Most of the joints work fairly well. And this figure is a perfect example of why, when I reviewed that Thrasher suit Batman figure <coughs> from DC Collectibles, why I said it had so many problems. Uh, this is basically a thras Thrasher suit Iron Man, or that's a Hulkbuster Batman. Same type of concept. This figure is 10 years old, and the articulation works way better than that new one. So they definitely could have done better, and that's a good example, and that's what I'll, I'm going to say about that. Because this is a review about Iron Man, so let's take a look at it. As far as the paint goes, it's mostly just gold and red. There's no shading anywhere, but they did panel line. If you're a Gunpla person, you know what that means. They did put the black lining in just about everywhere, and it looks pretty good. I mean, they could have made it sloppy very easily, and for the most part, it's a very clean paint job. It does look pretty good. The red's kind of glossy, and then the gold is metallic. I assume they made the red glossy on purpose to make it look like it was metal or painted metal or whatever you want to say. Uh, so I'm okay with it. Could it look better? Definitely. But it looks fine, especially for being a 10-year-old figure. It holds up just fine against any current figures. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I am excited for the uh, the new Build-A-Figure Hulkbuster. I'm, I'm excited to see how they compare. This guy was part of the Legendary Rider series, so he comes with this kind of... Uh, hoverboard thing that his feet peg into or he could peg it into his back like that uh, I, I think it's pretty much pointless so I just set that aside if that's your thing though that's fine so let's look at it he's got the top part that opens up and you can see Tony Stark inside he does look kind of old I don't care for that Tony Stark head too much but it is well done nonetheless and then they did paint and sculpt the cockpit so that's kind of cool I would most likely just leave it closed though. The one thing I don't like about this figure as a serious issue is since that opens, there's no way that it can rotate without making a really complex joint. So you can't move the head at all, unfortunately. It is disappointing. The shoulder pads are on separate pieces and they're soft so they won't get in the way of the articulation at all. The shoulders are on standard ball hinges, but the way it's kind of hollowed out around them, they work really well. I mean, in a few places, the, this area right here gets in the way, but for the most part, the arms are fully posable. This guy's a little bit big. Let me pull the camera back and up a little bit. You shouldn't have really too much trouble posing this guy. The joints work pretty well. And then we do have an elbow joint that gives us a full 90 degrees, so that's really good. The shoulder or the forearm guard is a soft plastic, so it just flexes out of the way. So that's a nice bit right there. We have a wrist swivel, and it doesn't get hindered by that wrist guard again because it's soft plastic so you can move the wrist however you want to. We have a wrist hinge. This one's stuck right now because it's old and I haven't moved it in forever but there you go. So the wrist hinge works just fine. Thumb articulation, finger, other finger, middle two fingers. Uh, nice articulation. I do wish you could bring the palm up more for a repulsor blast but this guy doesn't have repulsors. I'm not sure if this design is supposed to or not but it doesn't so that's something to note. Uh, torso articulation. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have any lateral movement. I don't think so. I think that's just a little bit of flex or play in the joint. But we do get a decent ab crunch going forward and back and it rotates on that. And it'll rotate down here also so you can use those in conjunction to make it look good as you pose it however you need to do it. It shouldn't be too problematic. For the hips, we have T-jointed hips. Unfortunately, they are fairly limited due to the sculpt. You can get a decent range out of it, but it's not great. Uh, they do have the sideways hinge also, but again, it's fairly limited. Thigh swivel at the top right here. Uh, my left leg is stuck, but the right one works fine. So you can see that. 
double jointed knees, which actually give us a surprising range of motion for a big figure like this, so that's pretty good. And then for the ankles, we get a nice range of motion. It's not great, but, well, actually, it's pretty horrible. I thought it was better. Memory, memories do a weird thing to you. So I thought it was better based on memory, but it's not. So that's all you get. You only get that one click, which isn't great. You do get the toe joint to account for it, but still, it would be better to have better range of motion. And then, though, there is an ankle rocker, so that is a good thing. So for a big guy, he's got pretty much the same articulation that we see on the current standard size Marvel Legends. So I think that's pretty good. He's a nice looking figure, definitely a nice display piece to put on the shelf with the other Iron Man figures are up against Hulk. And you'll see that at the end here when I pose him. Very cool figure. Is it a great figure? Probably not. I mean, you can tell it's a mass market figure and it didn't dump thousands and thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, into designing a super figure. But for the original price point of like 12 bucks, you can't beat it. And I think he's still not super expensive. Maybe he is based on the new movie, but for a while you could get him around 30 bucks. So even then, I think it's worth having and I do recommend it 100%. So there it is guys, make sure you uh, click that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. You can also follow me on Facebook so you can see information about upcoming figure releases and previews and things like that. And I'm also on Twitter so you can follow me on that if you want to. And in the meantime, keep collecting.